Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Gabriel Becker. I'm a software engineer at uh, Red Hat and I'm part of the platform secured compliance team, mostly for uh, RHEL. And uh, I'm here with my colleague. Hello, my name is uh, Wojtek Plaszek. I'm also part of the same team as Gabriel. Uh, yeah. So what is this uh, workshop? Um, so first, uh, we are going to give you uh, an introduction uh, on some concepts for uh, secure compliance. Uh, what is it about? Uh, explain some, some of the details and some of the motivations behind all these uh, projects. And, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, a little bit about the project itself, the compliance as code, and all the tools that compose this ecosystem. And uh, later, uh, we'll give you some details about the, the workshop, uh, what kind of exercises you'll be going through, and uh, <clears throat> what kind of uh, things you'll be learning from this workshop. And uh, in the fin final part, there will be some uh, technical instructions and practical considerations about this workshop. So now I give the word to Wojtek. Okay, thank you. So once again, welcome everyone. And uh, as uh, you can see in the name, this workshop is going to be about uh, security compliance a lot. You will, you will, and and the content which will help you with in a security compliance. And you will hear the word security compliance a lot in this workshop. So I think it's good idea to uh, say something about some basic terminology. So let's start like with the word compliance. So compliance, uh, it means that uh, something is uh, aligned according to some security policy or ac according to some standard. Uh, I don't know, let's say that your phone should be IP68 compliance, which means that it should withstand some harsh conditions, water and stuff like that. So it's compliance. And the security compliance is uh, compliance in the security, let's say, frame, like framed within a security area. Uh, it's actually quite a large, uh, large area of things. You can have, for example, compliant door to your server room. You, know, you can, you can have a, that so that they can withstand the fire. Uh, you can have a compliant uh, reporting. You can, you can be, have like some legal in, in security compliance. So like, it's quite wide area. But part of it is also compliance of your uh, computer systems and especially their configuration. And that's, uh, that's what we are going to talk about in this workshop. So how does it work? Like usually, let's say that you're a bank or like some financial finance processing company. And there exist some standards which you should fulfill, you should be compliant with as a financial organization. So how does it usually work is that there is some there is something called policy it's usually some document it can have many many requirements including as i said legal and like physical security and stuff like that but uh, also it has some requirements for uh, systems uh, config configuration of computer systems and someone has to go through that and like configure systems configure the systems and then check it and then they can pronounce themselves yes we are compliant for example with pci dss which is uh, exactly the policy for payment payment industry and uh, this can be actually quite tedious and long because these policies can have hundreds of requirements and when you have hundreds of servers and hundreds of requirements this can take a long time it can be error prone so that's uh, where there comes an automation to help you to achieve this so next slide please uh, automating security compliance. And I want to stress that I'm talking really about compliance of your computer systems and their configurations. Uh, we have a, we have a tools, let's call them scanner in general. And you will use actually one of these tools here in this workshop. And how does it work? So the scanner, it can basically do two important things. First thing is to check the configuration. 
like if the I don't know let, let's give an example that one of the requirements from the policy is that um, the minimum password length <clears throat> length on the system has to be eight characters so the scanner like can check this and uh, if uh, if it's uh, possible it can also fix it we call it remediate and throughout the whole project so remediate equals fix um, and uh, but the scanner is just a tool yeah the scanner is just a tool so uh, it it can do some things but it needs to know what to check and what to fix and that's when the content comes to comes to uh, comes to the scene and this content has some standard it's uh, it's called uh, scup which means uh, which means uh, security content automation protocol and this is the thing which is consumed by the scanner and the scanner can actually do its work and the content is the thing which we are going to work with in this workshop actually uh, so next slide please so the compliance is content compliance is code it's a big actually the world's largest open source repository of the security content which is used used to achieve compliance uh, I would like to say one more thing, uh, you can imagine you can translate compliance very loosely as a security. If you are com if you are compliant, you are secure, but se secure according to some standard. Just just like a side side note, so that so that it's easier to understand the terms. So back to the slide, uh, the the content uh, lives on GitHub. It's highly customizable, as you will see in this workshop, because you will you will be able to create your own content to for your use cases, and it's compatible with uh, various scanners, including OpenSCAP scanner, OpenSCAP scanner, uh, which you will also use in this uh, in this workshop, and it's closely related to the project pr product uh, to the content. Uh, you will use its common line interface, but you will also be able to use SCAP Workbench, which is actually it's 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 a graphical interface to various features of of the scanner. Uh, next slide, please. So now I will tell you just a little bit about the content itself, how it's how it's uh, composed, how it's produced, or like why the content looks like like it looks. Uh, so imagine that you have the security policy, for example, PCI DSS. It's a long PDF document. It can be quite high level, and it's of course very hard. It's it's very hard to be consumed by by a uh, by a computers because it's it's written in, in human readable. And so what usually happens is that you can take this policy and decompose it into requirements, getting to low level, like I don't know requirement. Uh, prevent root from logging in through SSH, or uh, as I said, uh, set, configure the system so that uh, the password uh, has to have at least eight characters. And these are quite low level things, and these can be translated into code. So that's where the rules come to play in our system, uh, in the content, because the rule, one rule is actually a specification of some system configuration. It's composed of some metadata, like a description, like, yeah, what is this rule about, uh, how it's called, uh, like which policies reference this rule and stuff. And then it contains usually a, some check, which is written, for example, in oval language. And this check is then consumed by the scanner, which we talked about before. Uh, and according to this check, the scanner checks the configuration file, like opens the uh, configuration for SSHD and like looks if there is the line. And if the line is not there, it can remediate it. That's, uh, that's why the <clears throat> rules contain also remediations. They can be like bash scripts or Ansible snippets or, or, or some other, other uh, scripts. We support uh, several languages. Uh, so this is a rule. And then we take the rule and we take many rules and we put them together, together with some additional metadata and variables. And uh, this creates a, something which we call profile in the content. And with the profile, we are at the high level again. And the profile is actually 
uh, representation of a policy like PCIDSS, uh, but it's code. It's already consumable by a software. In this case, uh, in this workshop, it will be OpenSCAP scanner. So that's uh, that's what this content is about. We take policies and we decompose it, translate it into rules, and you create a profile. And then you can then actually this profile you can use to help you with achieving compliance. Like it will not, not make your systems magically compliant. Uh, of course, you should like review it and some things are not even uh, possible to automate properly, but it will help you, I believe, in a great deal. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is, just, uh, this is just a summary. Where can you actually use the content? Uh, so you can use it together with an appropriate scanner, like an op open scan. Uh, you can use it to scan, or like to ensure compliance of uh, physical machines. They, there can be uh, like uh, your uh, local machine, or it can be also a machine which you can access through SSH. You can achieve, uh, uh, you can try to uh, achieve compliance of uh, containers. For example, on Podman backend or Docker backend, you can also check uh, images of virtual machines, like hard drive images, and you can also use it uh, within your Kubernetes infrastructure to to ensure that the infrastructure stays compliant. Uh, that's uh, that's I think enough of theory. I think we should get to pra some practical things. So I'm giving a word back to Gabriel, who will tell you something about uh, about the workshop. Okay, thank you, Wojciech, for this explanation. Um, and now I will talk uh, a little bit about what you will be learning uh, throughout this workshop. And uh, mainly the first part is composed by uh, creating rules and, and profiles, uh, modifying them and uh, um, making it uh, according to your needs and then with this uh, content, you will like, perform a scan using the OpenSCAP scanner and checking uh, like results if uh, the configuration uh, actual, actually passes or fail. And furthermore, uh, you're going to uh, learn how to customize the content, like change a, a variable, in this case, for example, the password length. Uh, instead of eight, my organization uh, requires to be 12. So this kind of uh, customizations. And uh, for the last part, you will see how the, the Ansible remediations are integrated to the, the project and how they uh, are handled by the project and how can you can develop them and apply the fix to bring the system to a desired state. Um, and now some some of the practical considerations for this uh, workshop. Uh, Wojciech, can you please uh, mute your uh, microphone? Uh, yes, I'm just uh, trying to find the proper button. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, and some some practical considerations about workshop. Uh, this workshop is uh, developed uh, mainly to be a self-paced workshop. Um, everything you need it will be uh, written to the documentation, and uh, um, this uh, the duration of the session unfortunately is like uh, quite uh, uh, short. Uh, usually it takes like two hours for the, the whole uh, workshop, but uh, the environment will uh, stay longer, so you can uh, finish, uh, finish it on your own. And uh, if you have any questions after the, uh, during the, 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 the session and after the uh, workshop, you can use either the chat uh, here in the hopping or the discord channel workshop and uh, also one extra uh, 
thing I would like to say is that the, this workshop is designed to, to use this uh, graphical user interface from uh, RHEL. So you'll be uh, ac accessing the remote desktop and uh, you need to have the VNC client installed. Uh, everything is described in the documentation, how to install, how to, to connect. Um, if for some reason you don't get to, uh, you cannot install this uh, application, uh, there is still a benefit from the workshop because like 70% um, of them is uh, through the command line. So no worries about that. And uh, right now I'm going to do a quick demo of uh, how to to get access to this uh, infrastructure infrastructure that we are providing providing you. And uh, so basically, there is uh, this web page where you can access through this link that I will uh, later post to the chat uh, the instructions so you can easily access. Um, so let's do it. So I have uh, here the, the page and uh, I put the security keyword and uh, my email address. And in this case, it will uh, lead me to the a page like this. And uh, in the squared uh, red box, there is the important information for this workshop. You uh, get a unique link that uh, will lend you to the a page similar to this one. And uh, in this uh, documentation, it contains, uh, for example, unique credentials. Uh, there is this uh, embedded terminal that you can use uh, to ease in the, like the, this, um, going back from the documentation to the terminal. But uh, of course you can use your own terminal. There are like uh, the credentials at the uh, SSH command to connect. So it's really up to you. So if I get back to the, to the page here, it uh, gave me this link. And uh, let's say I open it here. You can scroll here, then there is the setup steps. Uh, it's the place where you have the, the credentials. So you can basically copy paste and uh, use the, the password. So now you're in, you have like the, the labs, everything that I'm saying is described in the documentation. And uh, right now for the uh, VNC client, there are some instructions on how to connect to the, how to install the target, Tiger VNC application. But then there is this uh, trick that you have to use uh, to open the, the tunnel, you have to use your own terminal. So you go back to your terminal, uh, paste the command, and it will ask for the password. So you input the password and uh, you notice that it will uh, show nothing here. It will hang because after you are finished with the lab, you can just uh, uh, kill this uh, application with control C. And in another tab, in this case, uh, there is the VNC uh, viewer. You have to run it. In this case, you can also like just run VNC viewer and uh, it will show you this uh, uh, window. You put localhost colon one and uh, it will ask for a password again. And uh, it's basically the same one and uh, here, and then you have the access to the user interface. And from here, you, you can access uh, the web browser the SCAP workbench and everything that is described in the, the documentation from this workshop. So now going back to the presentation, as I said, uh, 
I would like just before uh, giving the, the, the links, just some references. Uh, this work, workshop is available as a, a static uh, version. So there are no like credentials, it's just the, the documentation. So you can use as a reference later. And there's also the possibility to run this same workshop on a Fedora VM. So there are instructions on how to set up your uh, VM accordingly. And uh, furthermore, there are some uh, links to uh, where to reach us after the workshop. For example, the discussion pages and uh, some mailing lists and etc. So finally, uh, I will be pasting the uh, instructions to the chat if you don't have it already. So you just click this link and uh, input the, the data and you will be able to access your environment. So I guess uh, this is it pretty much from the, the presentation. Um, we'll be uh, here uh, to answer any questions you have uh, during these uh, first phases and uh, after the session finishes we'll be around the uh, Discord channel to answer any questions. <laughs>